lovely piece. Um, firstly, listen to the many different recordings we have of this piece. Um, I'll link to some in the description below. I think kind of my first choice with this piece is listening to the different kind of versions. Um, is whether to have this um, quite typical of uh, music play, played in this uh, early music style, to have this unbelievable amount of rubato. If you listen to a lot of the recordings on romantic guitar or, or lute, it, it's so, so flowing rubato, I think, to, to such an extreme, and I, I love it. It's such a, um, a lovely feel. And then you listen to Julian Bream playing it and again on, on the record you can see it on YouTube in the description um, below that the, the whole record is, is wonderful and I really appreciate and love his version of it and it's very very different it hasn't got that that breath of um, many other versions and it sounds very guitar guitar-y you know um, he plays around with the, the, the Ponticello a lot and it oh, I love it um, but really, like the, the, there's a massive difference in time feel in this rubato that we need to think about. I would suggest for a grade seven, if you're playing this piece at grade seven level, trying to go for um, a, a really free flowing um, rubato feel might not be the best thing at this stage. I think um, a really confident feeling of pulse and rhythm is one of the things that develops latest as a musician and can take decades um, I know if I was at grade 7 level playing this when I was younger I, I would really struggle to um, to play rubato and still have this firm core of a pulse underlying everything it would be a lot more kind of flighty and to an audience member it would feel very disconnected so the way that some of these great players can can get around um this re real rubato this this pulling and pushing of time is they have such a strong sense of pulse within them if we can feel and hear the pulse at every step of the way even as we're dancing around it and pulling it and pushing it like an elastic band, tight and loose, then the audience can latch onto that too. If we don't have a hugely firm um, feeling of the pulse and we're doing all this rubato over it, it won't work and the audience will be lost with the rhythm. Maybe rubato is so nice because you... In, in doing it so well and in placing the rhythm so well and, 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 and um, varying it, you're kind of, uh, the audience can um, feel like they are these kind of masters of time too. They can feel the push and pull and they can hear it um, as if they're manipulating it themselves. If, if we can have an incredible rubato, the audience can kind of, I don't know, like they're part of creating that beat almost because they, they, if you express it so well that they feel it, then they're part of it. Um, I, so really I would be very careful of imitating extreme rubato in this piece at this level, unless, you know, you've been playing for a long long time and you're feeling a pulse is fantastic now a way to kind of test if your if, if, if your inner pulse is great say on a piece like this record yourself playing listen back and count along the main beats of the bar so you could go one two three four Especially in the pauses, in the minims, try and hear the beats there. If you can't do that and, and get a high level of accuracy with the beat, either your playing doesn't have that confidence in the pulse, or you as an audience member don't have that confidence in the player, in, in the recording, to be able to do that. 
and in either um, outcome the, the the pulse is not strong enough so I would recommend doing that I recommend recording this piece as, as, as well as many others and try counting along if it's easy and you're not lost on certain beats fantastic what you'll find at this level even at grade seven is people often coming in early after minims um, not giving it the full breath um, and say for instance like in bar 16 same thing like this do need to to hear and register those beats even if we do speed up slightly and you can but it has to make we have to feel it we can't just leave a certain amount of time and then come in we have to feel those beats even if we're speeding up so we could go one two three four one so i've sped up there but because i continued it and i felt it i think the audience can get brought along on that wave too um, so record yourself and count along if it feels easy and you're getting a good level of kind of um, accuracy with that fantastic if you're not then um, yeah I mean playing with a metronome is one way but it's not the, the best it's, it's, it's not the be all and end all because when you're playing with a metronome the kind of onus of of feeling the beat yourself is taken away from you because the metronome is there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if, if you feel it's lacking, the one thing you can do is is count along as you play, even if it means playing slower. Um, very, very worthwhile going one, two, three, one. I, also, singing it um, is quite important and hear, hearing those beats as you're singing. Dum, da, da, de, de, da, de. Um, another note on rubato is it it's it, rubato I think the best way to think of pulling and pushing time is that we have to follow the laws of physics um, in doing this like an inertia and motion imagine you roll a ball along the floor the way that it stops is perfect science it's perfect maths um it, it, the 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 slowdown will be gradual and then it eventually boom it stops it's a bit like throwing a ball in the air i mean the gravity is in, is a great way to think about rubato the the gravity of a ball speeding up and then as it reaches its its height it slows down that could be like an upbeat and then comes back down again speeds up at the bottom so we've got this amazing um copying of physical laws in our playing and we have to try and emphasize that in uh in our in our playing we have to feel this beat pulling and pushing like an elastic band um here's an example of that one two and three four and one that ending there um, bar 13 to 16 imagine that ball slowing down gradually and then it places itself um, so that that was quite a kind of a, a large amount of pulling and pushing time but because it, it it the kind of when it speeds up it it's prepared you can feel this this ratio between the notes getting faster and faster and then slower and slower it never kind of, um, it's not like cars crawling in traffic where you go like that and then stop and then that and stop and, you know, it's, it's, 
it's so free flowing um and maybe maybe sometimes uh, the way we play and just the physical aspect of playing the guitar can be a barrier to that so singing a line is really really useful we tend to be better with kind of timing and um, expression when we sing a line rather than play it a lot of the time um, because of our innate connection with music via our voice rather than the instrument which is always a step removed compared to um, singing um, okay that's rubato yeah really to cut long story short um, if you really love the sound of that, that the, the early style um, of playing, you know, really, really rubato, fantastic. But you'll have to work a lot at your internal feeling of pulse to pull that off at this level. Um, now moving on to bar by bar, um, look at the piece. So the first four bars, uh, I mean, really the... First bar. Firstly, we've got this ascending line. We've got this feeling of, of movement towards a second bar. And so never play the bar kind of zombie like the same the same throughout. It's building, the expression is up. So we need to kind of feel and then it kind of comes away. Then back down. So we've got this lovely emotion um, up and down, and we have to, even you know, well, well below grade seven, we've got to be feeling these long phrases and the the kind of arch of of the music. Um, I like to kind of uh, put on my student scores. What I call points of kind of gravity. Um, so in the in the second bar, this which we'll talk about later, this chord, and this trill, um, that's a point of gravity. That is, it's sucking the notes from the first bar into it, and the 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 rest of the phrase kind of comes out of it, and then rests in uh, kind of finishes in bar four. So it's like it's affecting every note before it, it's this big point, um, like a kind of black hole. So if we can kind of feel that, and then we hang in the air a bit, it's, it's, it's a suspense, and then the, the other notes kind of pour out of this point. And towards the next point. So we need this kind of flow. I would put a little star there or something on that chord to show that we're pulling into it and out of it. And then another one on the A minor chord in bar four, where the phrase ends. Um, this trill in bar two is very tricky because we can't block off the B string. So the third finger can't do what it normally does, which is pull off to the next string and then back. Um, it, it kind of has to pull up a little bit. Now we have to judge that so well um, uh, this kind of upward pull otherwise we block off the B string as such we can't really make this I, I, I feel like we can't do a strong trill and I don't think it should be strong there I think it's very light it kind of has to be unless you want to block off the B string which is it's an option um, I personally wouldn't Placing of the, 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 the fretting hat has to be so particular there. Very nice bent fingers in each joint. And don't worry if it is quite soft. We don't want to do a, a pure kind of upward motion where there's no pull off. Uh, but it's a very small pluck with the third finger. Um, now it's got this uh, on on the, the fourth beat of the bar we got this collapsing bar so so the first finger that's been on the G sharp does this collapse and um, this is really this is to, to keep the G sharp ringing on I don't think it's 100% necessary because by that point 
the G sharp is so quiet in the mix. I don't think we're going to miss it. Um, and we have to be careful doing this, Barry, not to create any extraneous sound on, say, the E string. Um, so, then it has to come off again. If you struggle with that, I, I would take it out. Because the G sharp is so quiet by that point, especially after this pull off. Um, what else am I doing here? Yeah, I don't want that B to ring on into the next bar, at the end of bar two. So I'm, I think I'm either placing my middle finger on that string straight after the chord in bar three, or I'm putting the fourth finger down early to block off the sound of the open B. And this is a good fingering here. Slide two, sorry, slide three, place four down, and then four on the A, two on the G sharp, and slide up, okay? And there's around the, the end of that phrase. So feel that flow there. Um, da, da, da. Next phrase, very similar thing in bar five. We can't do a, 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 a very powerful pull off because we can't block off the E string. I was thinking about trying, trying to do this somewhere else. You could feasibly go play the C on the G string. That works nicely. Mm, um, using the open B to bounce up to the fifth fret. Um, but I, I do like that it, it forces us to make these, these um, trills and mordants very soft. a rising phrase so we, we, we kind of rise with it this is interesting too because we have this G chord played the same way in bar six seven and eight um, and really the fine the, the the most important arrival on that is on bar eight so You feel like it's done, that something else will happen, but then it comes back to that chord. And it kind of persists. So that is the most important of those three statements of that chord and should be given this this feeling of, of again this gravity, this this the, the the whole line is flowing into that chord. It's a product of that chord. Block off the A string. You don't want that ringing on over bar six. So yeah, block it off after the chord. Likewise, the D in bar seven. Return to the D string to mute it in bar eight. And then we flow out of that. Da, 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 da. Trading lines between the, the first string, second string and first string, and then the, the fifth string. So the melody. Make that kind of, make sure there's a nice takeover there. Um, next phrase. Yeah, I'm choosing to kind of articulate that. Ponticello, I quite like that. It's it, it definitely the mu the kind of tonality, the harmony softens up um, there. I love that C chord. So so I'm 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 kind of making that A minor to E harsh, a bit harsher. Um,
I think in bar 11, I'm just muting that. Uh, both of those E's so they don't ring on. E mute by using the left hand, the fourth finger, flattened off. And mute the A again there after, after the, the G and the B. So fifth string, A. In bar 12, I chose to play the last four quavers in third position. I just like the kind of continuation of the melody on the second string. Second string, second string, second string. And it's such, such a sweet, um, the C major chord there that I quite like. Playing it on the lower strings rather than open. Bar 13. Um, yeah, it's interesting. This like this this G sharp. I feel like if this music was written later, the, that G sharp would rise to, to an A. There, it's kind of strange to have it not um, resolve itself. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, and for bar thirteen. I'm not doing this. It's a real stretch, even for you know big hands. Um, I think I just went two, one, and then one and three. I would say I think in the in that performance I played it with one and two on the A minor chord in bar fourteen. Um, I'd recommend one and three because then you can keep it on. I like the sound there. We're right, that, that obviously that phrase is rising, it's going to slow down at the end of the section. In this feel of rubato, it's coming, it's coming, there we go. You, you know, you can feel the, the phrase being, is a product of that last note, it's coming into it. It all serves that ending. Uh, let me soften up for the um, bar. Uh, 17, yeah. Um, again, keep this n nice and light. Another point of gravity on that chord, it's like um, the music is flowing into that bit. Pushes ahead, it's really uh, noble. Again, I'm um, I'm not preparing the bar um, just because I mean, if you are to prepare the bar, you get rid of the D. I don't mind jumping at the end of the bar. Maybe you should prepare that, Barry. Um, there, uh, I don't. This being a bit punchy as well. I think this was nicked from Bream. I think Bream does that. That's such an amazing, uh, like, intense kind of feel to his ponticello and vibrato. I love it. Um, yeah. Interesting here, vibrato. Some people say you should never do vibrato on old, on on music from the this period. Um, I don't. You know, I think. Many people are doing that, and that's great. Um, I kind of leave it to them to play historically accurate. Um, and for this grade anyway, of course, you've, you've got to do it. So nice vibrato. Again, I, I like this, the, the sound of it being slightly ponticello. Make these um, hammer-ons light. Don't kind of... Stick 
out like a sore thumb. They're strange. I think they can be like, as we bring this, this phrase down in volume. Um, also be careful not to, it's quite easy to play the, ryth the, the rhythm wrong there. Kind of accenting, that make, making the last note of each hammer on the fourth beat. So three and a four. Obviously we shouldn't do that. It should be three, four yand, one, two yand, three, four yand. Subtle difference. Um, again, I'm playing this C. I don't like this fingering. Is it asking you to hold down the C with the second finger as you play the, that? I don't like that. Um, very, it would be very hard to do um, to stretch that, but and then to stretch and not have any kind of string squeaks, uh, not for me. So I'm playing that um, with fifth string held down by the first finger, and then second and third strings with your third and second finger playing the E and C, and a barre comes off here lovely phrase um, in a way it works both doing a crescendo here Cello for the vibrato, I, I do. Um, it's it's very hard to get a vibrato on this first one, especially when the G you can't you can't do vibrato on the open G. Um, I kind of save myself a bit. I don't do a lot. And here I've got nice you know nice vibrato. You have to really hold down quite tight on these strings so you don't get that happening. Be very strong there, feel feel strength there, push hard. Um, and just be careful now that the th this last note here, it's only a crotchet. Um, it might be tempting to play that one, two, three, four, and one. And then we when we've got the wrong tempo, the wrong beat happening there. So it's only one beat. One, two, and three, and four, and one. Um, yeah, good, and now the campanella section. So the, this campanella, um, so it kind of translates as bell, I think little, little bell or bell-like. So if you think that, well, if you've got lots of bells playing together, they all ring on, they all they have this lovely sound of, um, you know, you're not going to stop the bell and then play the next bell and then stop that. It, it all rings on nicely. Um, and on guitar, obviously, this this uh, this effect is about playing the 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 notes on multiple strings so that we get this legato feel of all the notes ringing on. And it's very um, it's really evocative of kind of old lute playing because it's the lute is like that. All these strings ringing in in sympathy and obviously these notes just trickling on. Um, so we, we're, we're looking at kind of everything ringing on as much as we can in a way. You have to present the, the, the fretting hand in a, in a very particular way to achieve this. Obviously it, it's got to be quite kind of, I, I say like quite ninja-like in that we, we, it can only, each finger has to only a, uh, touch its string and nothing else. So we're dancing around trying to avoid these other strings. Um, so the first bar, um, also it says LV there, Lace of rear, so let ring. It's just all saying, let everything ring on, ring on be really, really nice and, and kind of free flowing. Um, And, and, and 
and what's happening too is that you're you're having to think hard about taking notes off because in when we're letting notes ring on we we can forget they're on so so playing that that B at the end of the bar we've got to obviously take the, the first finger off to get there oh, it sounds obvious but that's another thing to think about now when do we do that do we do it right before the B happens should so practicing this kind of flow big stretch um, now again here that's that's there's there's the tricky thing in this piece really this piece feels quite technically easy for grade seven with a few little bits like the trills, but this campanella section is it is tricky. Um, and if 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 you really struggle with that stretch, you know, I've got I'm six foot four, I've got massive hands. This isn't a problem for me, but you know it will be a problem for many many people. Like lace it, it, it we can adjust these these um, these goalposts for how long we let stuff ring on. Okay. It doesn't have to just always be forever, every note, forever, until that you can physically no longer let it ring on anymore. You know, it, you could take that D off as you're going to the C in bar 33. You're not losing the world. It's not going to destroy the music. Uh, so... Perhaps taking this this section in in tiny chunks of of where you do kind of ho almost hold down a chord. So, for instance, um, I mean, there that's got two that's got two kind of shapes. There and then here. That could be a nice loop. Um, and then the next phrase. Uh, that M I M P I that's another thing for the, the, the brain to get around is that when you see a, a fall in line like this you kind of think that the strings will be in all you know second string third string full string whereas with Campanella it's often second string then the fourth string then the third string playing a lower note like there A G got two notes going down but we're going up a string. So it's kind of something to get your head around there. Um, and, and I think also the hand is kind of constantly morphing to and moving between positions to create this campanella sound. Like here, when we get to the end of that bar, Kind of in a weird. I'm in a half position. I'm kind of in in fifth position, but not. You know, the second fingers having having to get to that F. And I'm kind of holding down the A, and then it expands here. So it's a really kind of morphing, moving kind of uh, fretting hand we need here. This is lovely. the harmonic just let that sit nicely in the mix don't try and play it too loud um, and the F rings over the E clashy but lovely yeah here I'm, I'm particularly aware of not blocking off strings this, this shape here has to be very nice and kind of square. And then here, here, you know, very 
precise kind of positioning of the first finger to not block off the first string. I would write down the right hand, the plucking hand fingerings for this whole section and try and come at, come at something um, the same each time. Again, here it's just you know P A M P I M A I. It's all over the place. The, the plucking hand. Uh, next phrase. I P. This is bar thirty seven. Um, M a I pull off M P I N M. It just it changes everywhere. It's, it's in it. Uh, so practice the plucking hand as much as the fretting hand. And 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 with a campanella section like this, we those open strings are the places where you move. There, for instance, don't don't leave that move up to the C in bar 39 to the last second. We've got two whole quavers, that's a lot of time to position ourselves. And and the, the positioning of the fingers is so crucial with this because if we're playing it slightly flat or wrong, we're not gonna get it's not gonna ring on. So the the, the initial approach of each note is is very important, it has to be very precise very bent here, my first finger for that C. Two nice harmonics, sliding down the second finger. Here it's like a lovely kind of um, this this voicing. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba, da, it's like the it kind of spits into the melody there. Okay, bar 42. There's a there's a tricky one to hold on. Again, you you don't have to hold on the whole thing for the whole time if it's if it's too hard. Some hands won't be able to do that. Um, you know, prioritize realize that, that when you're playing that fourth string A in bar 42, it sets off the fifth string. You can hear it there, that A. So it doesn't need to be held down. It'll still the A will still ring on if we play it kind of with a bit of force. I'm still the A is still ringing on there and I'm not holding it down. So the fourth finger is expendable on bar 42. You can take it off. You know the, these these subtle changes. You know to get that to ring, I'm I'm kind of coming back in this way. I'm kind of my hand is moving around a bit, coming in closer into the fretboard. It was here to get that stretch. You know it's it's, it's um, a bit more angled this way. So let the hand morph around each phrase. Hello. And then a nice strong ending. Feel that ball kind of coming to a, a stop, that rubato. of physics yeah, and motion. Um, so really we're looking at a lot of practice on the Campanella section relative to the rest of the piece. Um, record yourself playing this, listen carefully, record yourself on video playing it and listen, li watch carefully and see if there's any reasons why you know in the Campanella section certain strings are being blocked off, whether you can adjust the hand more to manage blocking off strings. Um, uh, lastly, of course, if you're listening to loads of versions of this, uh, most 
guitar versions I've heard don't have this campanella section at all. They just have a repeat of the first section, and it is different. Like Julian Bream's version is a different arrangement, so there will be notes that you will hear that be like, "Oh, what's that?" Don't worry about them. Play this, obviously. Um, play this version. Uh, and yeah, I've linked to a few versions to listen to in the comments in the description below. Have fun with this piece. Um, it's a nice introduction to Grade Seven. It isn't the hardest piece, um, technically. Uh, explore your tonal palette. Explore rubato and have fun.